Colossians 1.16 is a great verse on the supremacy of Christ. Paul has just said that Jesus is the image of the invisible God and the firstborn of all creation. And now we're going to find out what the basis of those affirmations are. Hati en auto ectiste ta panta entois urinois kai epites case ta horata kai ta aorata eta thronoi eta curiatetis eta archai eta exusiae ta panta dia autu kai es auton ectistai there are some tongue twisters in there weren't there four and this is an interesting preposition n and there's a good discussion in the commentaries about the relationship between n and dia and ace you may want to take a look at that but of course you can't say because in him because that doesn't really make any sense creation wasn't in him so it's probably the instrumental so by him so by jesus was created all things and now we're going to have a series of merisms where you state the opposites to mean everything in between them all the things in heaven and on the earth another merism the things visible and the things invisible and that especially includes all spiritual beings. So whatever these next four nouns refer to, they most likely are spiritual beings, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. You remember what Paul is going to be talking about in Colossians 2. He's preparing the way for that. And then he repeats himself, all things, then through him and and again, into him doesn't make any sense, but it's Ace is indicating the ultimate goal, that it's for him. And then, what is this word? <laughs> it's, an, it's an interesting word, right? It's, it's from katidzo. And idzo verbs actually end in a dental, right? So things are going to happen. Uh, in the morphology, this is a 2 a one word. And in these particular words, sigmas are inserted. So you're not going to get an explanation for the sigma any other way other than to see that they're simply inserted. But again, what do you have? You have a vocalic augment, not a consonantal augment. And then you have this word, the dental, being altered to a sigma, and then the ending. So yeah, this is a perfect passive. These things were created. And it's interesting to ask yourself whether there's any difference in the change of tense. So we'll get down to phrasing and we'll start seeing things. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to run out of room, so I need to make the font smaller. So because in him, all things were created. Well, Paul, what do you mean by all things? Well, things in heaven and the things on earth the things visible and the things invisible, whether thrones or dominions or powers or authorities, all things were through him and for him were created. Now, depending upon how detailed you want to get, you could make a, really a long vertical list here. But we're going to start here. What do you mean by all things? And you could put Uranois and Geis on two different lines if you wanted to emphasize their parallelism. But I'm going to leave it this way, just to save space. And that includes the spiritual powers. And then he repeats his basic thesis. And in fact, I don't think I'm going to put it there. I think I'm going to keep it out there. Now, we do have room, so I'm going to do this. But I'm not going to have room for the final four, so I'll just leave it like this. One of the things that's really interesting is to look at the variants here. There are some variants that want to put an article right there and right there, which parallels 
the ta and the ta. Of course, this is one of those situations where you never talk about variance without talking about the significance. Whether the ta is there or not has no effect on the meaning of the passage. The other interesting variant is that there is, in some manuscripts, a hati there, repeating the hati from there. Again, no significance in meaning at all. Never talk about variance without talking about significance. And in fact, it would be kind of nice to find a way to make the n, dia, and ace obviously parallel with each other, but I don't think there is a way to do it. Basically, I think it's instrumental up here that by him all things are created. And then what does that mean? Well, it means that they were created through him, that Jesus, the second member of the Godhead, was the actual agent that was doing the creation, and all the creation was pointing towards him. So these two are trying to define what the end is. A great verse, though.